I am going to start a lecture series on medical physics and the first chapter from which I would be starting is the metro and radiation. I will be covering in a chapter wise fashion and will be covering one topic in each lecture. So this is going to be the first lecture and we will be covering the basic definitions in this lecture. The first thing we are going to start is a quick region of the SI units for the mass. The SI unit is kilogram. For all the lengths we will be using meter which is SI unit of the length. For time it's second. For the electric current it's ampere. For the temperature it's going to be Kelvin and for the light intensity or the luminous intensity the SI unit is going to be candela which is directly indicative of how much bright the light is going to be. So these would be the basic SI units which we will be using in our next topics. The SI units we have just seen all the other units are going to be derived from these units. For example now if I discuss the unit of the energy it's the joule and joule is one kilogram per meter cube per second square. So these are going to use the same SI units as we have as which we have discussed previously. The second is going to be the unit of power which is known as watt which is indicated by W and is equal to one joule per second. After that the unit of electric energy is the coulomb and it is the quantity of the charge which is transported by a current of one ampere flowing for one second. So it's known as one ampere second and the unit of electric potential is the volt and volt is the EMF or the potential difference required for a charge of one column to acquire one joule of energy. These definitions are a bit difficult but the main concept is that the you just remember the unit of energy is joule, unit of power is going to be watt, volts is going to be the potential difference and these are the basic concepts which will be required in the further physics discussions. The two, two more units which are also derived from the SI base units which we'll be discussing in the coming chapters is the absorbed dose which is the unit is gray and one gray is equal to one joule deposited in one kilogram and for the nuclear medicine where radioactivity is going on there is a unit Bechtel and Bechtel is indicative of one episode of activity per second and these two units are also derived from the SI units. So we are going to discuss a few forces which are existent in the atom. One is the electromagnetic force which is a force of attraction or repulsion between any charged objects. These could be attraction if these are opposite charge like negative and positive and would be a repulsive force if the charges are same like two negative charges or two positive charges which are going to repel each other. The other forces also known as strong forces, weak forces and fundamental forces it's the interaction between the protons and neutrons. Now as you know that there are protons in the nucleus now you need a certain force to keep them together as the electro electromagnetic force is going to repel them. So to in order to keep them in one position you need other forces. So these forces are in just an overview so you can just have an idea like the strong force which has a relative strength of 10 to raise to power 38 in comparison with gravity. If you consider gravity as single unit so you can have an idea how much strong this force is and the range of interaction is at 10 to raise to power minus 15 and we will be seeing what 
this values means and where we are going to use this value and the main function of this force is going to be the binding of the nucleons together and the electrom and this force is going to act between not only protons but between the proton and the neutron and proton with the proton the other force is the electromagnetic force which we have discussed that it's going to be the force between the particles which are going to be electrically charged could be repulsive force or could be attractive force the weak force we can just leave it uh, for the time being because it's only used in some beta decay and the gravity is between the particle and the mass now i'm going to return back to the energy so you all know that kinetic energy is the energy which is due to the motion of an object so the formula is going to be kinetic energy is equal to half mv square where m is going to be the mass of the move moving object and v is going to be the velocity now there is one problem that joule which is the uh, si unit for energy is a very large quantity when it comes for the atomic structure so to substitute it what we do is using the charge of an electron as 1.6 into 10 to raise to power minus 19 coulomb we equal it to the energy which is 1.6 into 10 to raise to power minus 19 joule as it is energy and make it as one electron volt so in this way we have derived a small unit from the joule so we can use it more easily in our atomic physics and all the equations which we are going to drive and another thing is that one electron volt is the kinetic energy which is obtained by an electron when it is accelerated between a voltage difference of one volt and this is very important when we are going to discuss the extra tube but to give you a to make the concept clear let me draw a simple diagram for you let's make a filament on this side and then the anode on this side this is going to be the negative charge this is going to be the positive charge so if i connect this cathode with the anode and now the potential difference between this negative charged and the positive charge is going to be one volt so if electron is released from this side and travels towards this side if the potential difference is going to be one volt the energy which will be acquired by the electron which is the kinetic energy because of the motion is going to be one electron volt so whatever the potential difference you are going to apply between the anode and the cathode is going to be the energy of that electron which is traveling between that potential difference so for example now if i increase the potential difference between these anode and the cathode from 1 volt to say 100 kilovolt the energy of the electron traveling at that moment from the anode sorry from the cathode to the anode will would be 100 kilo electron volts so these are the two examples i have drawn for you so this is take it as 10 kilovolt and this is 75 kilovolt so the potential difference between this negative and this positive anode is going to be 10 kilovolt and in this case it's going to be 75 kilovolt so the electron which is going to travel from this cathode to the anode will be having a kinetic energy of 10 kilo electron volt and in this case the electron which is going to be traveling from the negative cathode to the positive anode due to the potential difference of 75 kilovolt is going to end up having a 
kinetic energy or total energy of 75 kilo electron volt so this is going to be the basic concept which we are going to discuss in the x-ray tube uh, and production of x-rays energies can also exist in two forms an energy which is without a mass or velocity as we see in electromagnetic radiation and then you can have a breast mass energy of a particle which depends on the mass of the particle and it uh, can be derived from E is equal to mc square and the mass energy of the electron is going to be 500 and, uh, 511 kilo electron volt so this is just like putting the mass here and multiplying it with the c square and you will get this energy as the result the last thing is that for the electricity in a circuit it, the voltage are always going to be equal to the current multiplied by the resistance within that circuit and now one thing about the power power is always derived by voltage into the current voltage multiplied by current and for example if an extra tube is operating at 80 kilovolt and uh, the current flow between the anode and the cathode is say 500 milliamperes so the total power would be 40 kilowatts at that time so these basically two things we will be using these both concepts in our further discussion but just memorize these two formulas v is equal to ir and the power is equal to voltage into current so here i will be finishing my first lecture on the very basics and fundamental definitions and i hope you like these but just revise this lecture uh, all the things which we have discussed in this lecture would be used repeatedly in our future lectures